Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clifford Brooks again on this beautiful Saturday morning. And I have come again to Rainer Maria Rilke. He is one of my favorites in the world. And he was so far ahead of his time that still it um, strikes me how contemporary his verbiage and his, his spirit is within his poetry. I found him uh, midpoint through my walk in life from a friend of mine who is a big fan. And it's one that really depends on the translator. It's, uh, of course, originally written in German, but um, the, the translation is flawless. Uh, he was a quiet man. A lot of people know his book, Letters to a Young Poet, uh, that truly is one of the few guides to um, any poet, whether you know living now or in 50 years from now, that's a very practical, non-dramatic uh, tool for success and to know whether or not you're cut out to be a poet. He has much shorter works. I've written, uh, read on this program before, uh, Orpheus, Eurydice, and Hermes, which is one of my favorites of his. But today I'm going to read a much shorter poem, and uh, it's called Silent Hour, and it's beautiful. It sounds a bit dour in its connotation, and it, it is. And it's, um, I think, one of those late 3 a.m. kind of poems where you sit there and have a, uh, oh, my God, what have I done moment. Uh, whether you've sacrificed something for the greater good of your art or um, someone or uh, your, your place on the economic ladder. It's also, I think, um, a stopping point for a writer or artist of any kind or anybody really in their vocation where they've devoted their life, where they look out into the world and they have the world look back at them and they feel as if they are alone and cut off and laughed at. And it's not always a fun feeling, but at the same time, the only way you get those monkeys off your back, that those doubts out of your mind, um, the, the hooks out of your skin, is to write it, to get it out, good, better, and different. Um, for me, again, going into this uh, winter season where the days have gotten shorter, you know, there is a, a uh, shadow over my heart, as it were. And I've learned to deal with it, and life has gotten wonderful. And these poems don't actually make me um, sadder like Ray LaMontagne albums, who I love, but I can't make it through one without wanting to walk in front of a bus. But uh, Real K has a way of taking something, a sentiment, whether it be good or bad, um, and carving it into something palatable and not so heavy or, or, or um, mournful that you have to put it down and walk away. He has several themes he sticks to, uh, religion, nature, and then um, Greek mythology. He'll tap back into over and over again, but never does it feel redundant. And in this poem really kind of stands apart other than the mention of angels um, as a uh, kind of a embedded idea. So I'll read the poem now first, and we'll talk about it a little bit. Silent Hour. Whoever weeps, somewhere out in the world, weeps without cause in the world, weeps over me. Whoever laughs somewhere out in the night, laughs without cause in the night, laughs at me. Whoever wanders somewhere in the world, wanders in vain in the world, wanders to me. Whoever dies somewhere in the world, dies without cause in the world looks at me it's a it's sparse use of punctuation and what i mean by angels is that in my mind it's kind of this otherworldly this idea that you know heaven is literally too far away where maybe the messengers or the watchers what have you are looking at this man but it also brings to mind this idea of someone who is strong, that someone who weeps in the world, that weeps without cause in the world, weeps over me. Not that he caused the pain, not that he is the pain, but perhaps this poetry, this art, his song, uh, the, the, the spirit that he conjures in order to make these words happen creating weeping, not in a bad way, but in a real way, a tangible way, a way that creates rain. 
Whoever laughs somewhere out in the night, laughs without cause in the night, laughs at me, not laughs over me, laughs at me. And again, at first, it, you know, on one hand, you can say that that's a, um, a very uh, sarcastic, very uh, mean-spirited kind of laughing. But at the same time, when you see your favorite comedian, you don't laugh over them. That's almost as if you're talking about them later. You laugh at what they're doing. So again, you have this, you know, this, this, this coin here with two sides. Whoever wanders somewhere in the world, wanders in vain in the world, wanders to me. The idea of the shepherd, you know, the, 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 whether it be Jesus or, or something more pagan in nature, it's still the same idea of bringing a flock. If they wander in vain and they wander to him, Perhaps the wandering before they find him is the is the is the lost in vain part of the journey. And when they find him, and again, it's, it's always as if, you know, not trying to put me in the center of it, but it feels as if it's calling to me. This this poem just I didn't find it until a couple of days ago, really struck out and was speaking to me because you feel like all of these things you're being laughed at. You know, you you want to cry and, and wonder, you know, what in the world did I do? You know, how much have I given away? And that, you know, but to, the 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 idea, the the paraphrase, you know. All who wander are not lost. It comes to mind. And so it's not me trying to look at the sunny side of life. It's just, you know, the beauty of words and the simplicity here is that it leaves so much range. And then whoever dies somewhere in the world, dies without cause in the world, looks at me. That's it's the most powerful stanza in the poem. And dying in a real sense. And I can say this at 41, not being old, but too old to be in the club, that um, death does not have to be a um, time for mourning and it doesn't have to be an end to anything. But when you put down the old you and become and walk in the new you in a fresh flesh, um, the death is uh, of a way that no longer works for you, a suit that is too small. And so this world now that has potentially freed itself through this death looks at him, looks at his work and looks to him for an, uh, maybe a hint to the direction they should follow or the uh, song that they, sh they should sing or um, a, uh, a hint to a pitfall they can avoid. He was whether he meant these things or not. And it's, it's, it's a sentiment that I agree with completely that what Rilke meant, what his literal intention was, is not the point. What we take from it, what our reflections are in the poem. And that's why I urge everyone to read these for themselves and reflect on it because I'm not sitting here telling you that this is the biblical only way to see this poem. My idea is to show you my thoughts and how I pull it apart and that it's not rocket science, but it's it's not the fanciful bit of uh, luxury that has been painted out to be. Um, I'm going to have a moment in the future to really kind of get into the background of Real K and his life and um, especially, uh, you know, Letters to a Young Poet, and just a, a moment to give some um, biographical notes on his life and, and how, again, he, he skirted all the cliche um, uh, attributes of an artist and uh, really stuck to the, uh, the hardworking the uh, the pragmatic, the linear, the um, professional man that he was, but that he still had the same demons. And you can't have those demons. It's just that the demons don't have you. And if you feel like they do, then perhaps you need a silent hour. And again, it takes a sad first read, but take a breath and open your eyes, take a walk and come back and read it again. And I promise you, won't read the same twice. And to wrap up, I'll read it one last time, just because it makes me happy. Silent hour. Whoever weeps somewhere out in the world, weeps without cause in the world, weeps over me. Whoever laughs somewhere out in the night, laughs without cause in the night, laughs at me. Whoever wanders somewhere in the world, wanders in vain in the world, wanders to me. Somewhere in the world, 
dies without cause in the world, looks at me. Silent Hour by Rainer Maria Brilke. Thank you so much.